Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to uh, part three of the Tech Pack series. Uh, video number one uh, gave an overview of all the elements in a Tech Pack. Video number two went over. I want to say four or five of the pages in greater detail and I uploaded templates of those tech pack elements in my Etsy store so that y'all can purchase them and use them for your own tech packs this is video number three we're continuing to go through elements of a tech pack in greater depth. Today we're going to go over our specs measurement sheet and a grade rule and I'm going to be introducing y'all to a couple of books that I have found quite useful. Okay. The first thing I want to start off by saying is you know there are a lot of elements to a tech pack and of course depending on the kind of garments you're designing uh, a lot of these elements, these pages, can be merged into one or you might not need them at all. You know, some garments are super complicated. Uh, you know, like, like a windbreaker that has seven, you know, interior pockets and a hood with, you know, a lot of active wear that has these like extra panels and Velcro detachments and zippers and like bungee cords that close the hood and, you know, detachable sleeves. Like those are really complex garments and really need like the most meticulous tech packs. And then you have t-shirts. T-shirts are good. I like wearing T-shirts. Are they very hard to make? No, they are not. Do they need all of these pages? No. Okay. But your spec measurement sheet and your grade rule sheet is necessary for all garments. Why? Because every garment has measurements that they need to follow and every garment needs to be sized up and down so that you can offer smalls and larges and extra larges and triple X larges and all that good stuff. Whether your tech pack has three pages or has 30 pages, the overriding rule is your info must be consistent across all sheets, okay? This is something actually Kathleen Fastnell and I talked about when I went to go visit her in Albuquerque earlier this year. And so we talk about tech packs and she's just like, number one thing, you know, if all the information has to be the same. I don't want to see, you know, a chest measurement on one sheet and then see a different chest measurement on a different sheet and be like, which one am I supposed to follow? She's got a point. She's got a very good point. So always make sure that all your information is consistent. So in the templates that I sell, or if you choose to make some on your own because you are good at Excel, I make all of these templates in Excel. I have always done my tech packs in Excel. And then in the templates that I sell my Etsy store, I also sell a PDF version, just so you have it, okay? But up here, you would put in all your contact information Specifications, measurement, sheet, that's the title, style number, and fabrication. Because sometimes the measurements will be different depending on the fabrication, especially if you have something that's like super stretchy. Description, you know, basic. Uh, and your sample size. Sample size is very important because you have all these measurements and everyone needs to know what size those measurements belong to. And your sample size should be your middle size. Okay, so if you're doing a run with X small, small, medium, large, extra large, your middle size is medium. You develop the pattern for your middle size so that you have an easier time grading your sizes up and down. Now you may be thinking, but Zoe, when I see these runway shows, nobody wears a size six, you know, or a medium. Everyone is a small, extra small, size zero, size two. They're all willowy thin and super tall. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but that's runway and that's marketing. Okay, but for product development, for improving your patterns, for ease in grading, go with the middle size. Here it says measurements are in inches. I put this in red because I know I have a lot of foreign uh, 
viewers and many of you use the metric system. Lucky you. <laughs> so fix that on your own template, you know, for your needs. And then the bulk of it. First of all, I number all the line items, okay? Because when you're in a meeting or when you're on a conference call and you want someone to pay attention to something, friends just be like, can I direct your attention to item number 17, please? And people just burp, super easy. So this is where all your measurement descriptions are. So neck circumference, neck drop, you know, sleeve length from center back. And then I have four columns here and don't be overwhelmed by that because I mean oftentimes you won't even need these two okay so I have first sample second sample third sample fourth sample and I know that there are fancier words for these like your last sample is top blah 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 and it's like I don't know which one is going to be your top it's, if it's going to be your second sample or your fourth sample so I didn't put those down I just numbered them so you have a column for your, your actual measurement so when you get the garment, the first sample, you're going to measure it out and you're going to write down the measurements in this column, in the actual column. When you have your fitting, you're going to request changes, unless it's perfect the first try, congratulations, uh, you're going to put in the requests, like I want the sleeve half an inch longer, I want the hem two inches longer, we decided to go for a more tunic length, all those good things, right? So you're gonna put in the change requests in the second column for the first sample. I would recommend, you don't have to do this, but I would recommend that you only note the requests so that they stand out. And everything else, just put in a little dash so people know that you looked at it and thought about it, but you're not making any changes, okay? So you can say, you know, plus two inches, minus half an inch, Jink, 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 whatever, okay? And then you keep going on this page so that you can track how the sample has progressed. I want to show you a few books that will help you measure things. So I spent some time going over these books, but a bit of a disclaimer, I have not used any of these three books to help me spec measurements. I <laughs> I got an assistant designer job straight out of college and part of my job was to measure garments and I just learned on the job. I didn't learn off these books. Number two, I've had these books for a few years and so I'm fairly certain that more updated versions exist in the world, but I'm just I'm going to review the editions I have. This one is a second edition. This one is a second. They're all second editions. I have not used them working in the industry, but I did read through them so that I can get a handle on what they're all about. All right. So look, this book is so old that it has a CD-ROM. And I don't know what's in the CD-ROM because I do not have a single piece of technology in my entire home that still read CDs. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what's in here. I mean, the contents of this book are in here. I know that. I just don't know what format. I don't know how usable it is. I don't know any of that. This book, okay, first you have some croaky figures help you. And, and what's nice is they have Missy figures, which Missy is what you call like the older women category, 40 plus bodies. Juniors are the younger figures category. They have plus size, they have front view, back view, they have men, they have women, they have children of different sizes. So here we go into how to measure a skirt and this one the flats are good. Okay, this one we'll talk about more. These flats are not as good. These flats are really nice. Let's get all up close and personal with how nice these flats are, right? So they're not perfect, but they're good. And here is a sample skirt spec sheet. And they do a thing where they do the front and the back and the total. You could do that, okay? This is another way of organizing your spec sheet. And yeah, it's all about workflow and work, what works best for you, okay? Oh, going back to 
naming your measurements, okay? I've seen two methods that work the best. I've already said that alphabetical doesn't work. So the two methods that I've seen are, one, if you go top to bottom, so when you're doing a skirt, waistline, waistband, pockets, you know, all the way down, if you have like a design detail on the top where the yoke sits, where your belt loops are top down. The other way I've seen it is big to small. So the measurements for high shoulder point to hem, center front, you know, center back, you know, the sleeve length from center back, like all these, the big measurements. And then towards the bottom, you have the smaller measurements like length and width of the welt pocket, length of the side slit, you know, size of your belt loops, like that. So whatever works best for your garments. And these are great because it has the bright green arrows and then the measurements are numbered. And then there's a table of measurements. So number four is here, it's this width here. And then here on this chart, you see number four is your high hip measurement. And it goes on like that in many uh, garment categories, pants and shorts, vests, uh, woven shirts, dresses, body suits, rompers, all that good stuff, sweaters, tailor jacket, outerwear, how to measure a bra. Okay, and then here they have examples, sample spec sheets and garment graphs. Okay, so that one's pretty good. This one is the complete guide to sp size specification and technical design. And first of all, I love the fact that it is spiral bound. It really helps to just be able to open it and leave it open and help you as you're working. Whereas something like this, I mean, it's nice and everything, but you can only really keep it open if you're in the middle. When you're out here, it doesn't work. But this one is spiral bound, so it'll stay open on any page. Love that. Okay, so this one is good. I'm not going to say it's that it's pretty thorough, but this, y'all, this thing is a juggernaut of OCDness. And I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> it's, it's so detailed. Okay. <laughs> so they have your generic spec sheets, you know. Again, these are done a little bit differently. These have the uh, room for the flats as well as the points of measure. And then they call their samples different things. Prototype, revised spec, for a sample, final spec. Okay. The thing that I think really is the best on my example is the actual versus the request so that you can fill, you know, track the changes. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, so this one, these are your basic measurement points. And so you have the little orange arrows that show what they're measuring. And then you have all these descriptions. This is number one, number one, number two, number two, right? And so it has all the descriptions of what they're measuring and how they're measuring it. And it's got, whoa, a lot of pages. Like it goes through a lot. And these flats are good. I would say that uh, the spec manual has better flats, but these flats are not terrible. They're pretty good. I mean, they get real nitty gritty on, you know, neck depth center front, neck depth front, neck drop front, neck drop back, neck with no collar, neck with with a collar. <laughs> like, they get into it every single variation. It's very thorough, and I like that a lot. Okay, it has 150 basic measurement points, all right. And then they have a whole chapter on working with knits. Oh my God, measuring knit tops. We have a million things. And of course, no garment is gonna have all of these, okay? These are all just like, these are the things that you could have happen in a sweater. And again, we're filling out all these examples. Knit dresses, so many, so many things, right? Working with wovens, okay. incredible these are I highly I do recommend 
either one of these. I feel like you could not go wrong with either one of these. This one is the Vendor Compliance Handbook, and I've mentioned this in previous episodes. I see episodes like I have a TV show. Oh my God. Uh, I've mentioned this book in previous videos, and it is something that I have found useful many times. And they do have a section on specifications and measurements and how to measure garments and yeah you know if you already have this book start here okay start with this section because it does give good information if you find you need more information then try either one of these two but really if you already have this book because I already talked about this book in terms of working in product development overall because okay, this is a really good overall product development book. It has their own tech pack templates, okay? And they're very good. And you might see the similarities between his and mine because A, I find this book useful. B, like, there's not a whole lot of variations. I mean, they should really be similar given the information they're supposed to give, right? If you feel like you need more information, you can check out one of these two. And then, you know, they have a section in the back that's all templates. Because, and then they have, you know, different pages for different, they have different measurements for different garments because what you measure for outerwear is obviously not going to be the same for a sweater or a t-shirt. All right, let's talk about grading. Okay, not the kind of grading, not the ABCD kind of grading I do in the classroom. But grading is the process in which you make, take your sample and you make it smaller or you make it bigger so you have a complete size range, okay? People have asked me to do grading videos. I can't because I have no grading experience. And you know me, if I don't know something, I'm not gonna talk about it. I, <laughs> I do not like to blow sunshine out of anything. So, and I do, however, have a grading demo done on StyleCAD with Kathleen Fascinella. And, you know, hand grading, it's really on its way out. So it would behoove you to, if you are interested in grading your own stuff, to get familiar with programs like StyleCAD. Uh, Kathleen loves StyleCAD. So go check out that video if you're interested in learning more about grading. In terms of when you're a designer, you should understand your grade rules and, you know, fittings and stuff, but you don't actually need to know how to grade things yourself. The grade rule, that's what they call it. The grade rule is, you know, a set of measurements that tell people how much smaller and bigger to make a garment. This grade rule can only be done when your sample is finalized. Most people, they don't even do it until they know that something is going to be cut for production. Okay, Because not every single style that you sample ends up being sold and mass produced and sent to stores. All right. It happens all the time. You know, some styles are really not as popular as other styles. And maybe you only get orders for two of them which really you shouldn't because if you're going the wholesale route, you should have order minimums, but whatever. So, you know, let's say you only have orders for two of them. You're not going to spend all that money developing, you know, production patterns, which are often different from sample patterns. You're not going to grade it out and make markers and all of that for just two garments. That is a complete waste of resources. Okay. So, yeah, so not all samples get made into production. So most people don't bother with the grade rule until they know that they're going to cut it for production. Unless, unless, okay, they have a really tight production cycle and they want to do as much stuff in the front end as possible because they have more time then. Then they'll start working on establishing grade rules and whatnot. Um that's one scenario. And another is if the grade rule already exists because you're using um, a fit that you've run before. For example, you like going to a certain store. Like let's say you like going to Banana Republic because the way they cut their pants really fits your body and you keep going back expecting that same fit, right? You know, they don't change the fit of their pants every season. That's you know, a money waste. And also, you know, brand loyalty is usually based off of fit more than anything. 
okay? If it fits, you'll, you know, think about it when you shop. If something fits you right, you'll forgive a lot of other stuff. You know, you'll develop a pant pattern that works and you'll keep using that block and changing fabrics, changing pockets, changing small design details, but you're going to keep you know, the basic shape of it the same, maybe shorten it one season, lengthen it and add a cuff one season, things like that. And so you'll already have the grade rule. When you are first starting out, I would recommend that you sew up a size run. Okay. I've said a million times already that if you are first starting out, that you should keep things really small, like five blouses. Okay, so let's say you're doing a line of blouses and you want to do something that's really professional and work friendly, but not boring as shit, right? So that's that's your pitch. That's what you're offering to the world. And let's say you're doing five of them and you're doing three in a fitted body and two in a boxy body. Okay, when you're first starting out and really trying to nail that product development and nail the fit, I once you've got your sample going and it looks good, I recommend that you cut a complete size run, one fitted one and one boxy one, and make sure that it looks good on all these different sizes and go find people in those sizes to try them on, okay? And I recommend this because you're gonna have more time before you launch than you're ever gonna have again, okay? People, once they start buying your stuff, they're going to expect you to sell every season, to offer new styles every season. You're going to get in that calendar. But if you haven't launched yet, you have more time to tinker and fine tune and perfect that product development process, get that fit nailed, all those things. Make sure that button placement is perfect so that you know your women's bras don't show, all that good stuff. Okay. And then moving forward, you don't need to keep doing that if you're keeping the same basic fitted silhouette and the boxy silhouette. You don't need to cut all the different sizes over and over again. You've done that. You know, you would only do that if you start changing this, the size or cut drastically or you're adding a completely different silhouette. And, you know, you can pitch that as part of your selling point, too. It's like, we've really fine-tuned the product development process. We cut this in a size 2 and tried it on a bunch of size 2 people. We cut this in a size 14 and we put it on a bunch of size 14 women. And we got this nailed, okay? These blouses are going to fit women. Like, that can be part of your sales pitch because who doesn't worry about fit? So this template, again, will be available in my Etsy store. Again, this is where you put your company logo and the contact information, style number and fabrication, description and sample size, same as your spec measurement sheet. Again, measurement are in inches or centimeters. Make sure you change that to suit what country you're doing production in. And then, again, you have your number points. And if these belong to the same style, I would recommend that you put these in the same order for clarity's sake. It just makes sense to be organized in this way. And then I left this blank because up here, you're going to put your size names. Okay, so, and it's going to be different for depending on the company and depending on, you know, the garment. Okay, most t-shirts, they run letter sizes like extra small, small, medium, large, etc. Okay, a lot of things that are more tailored are going to get the, you know, two, four, six, eight numerical system that I don't like at all, um, but that is the standard right now, so let's just go with that. Uh, if you're doing jeans, many jeans, uh, definitely for men and increasingly for women, you're going to have like the size, the sizes are going to run waist inseam, right? 30x30 is the number of, is the size name, right? 30 waist, 30 inseam, 32 waist, 31 inseam, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever that is, you're going to put them here. The middle one, obviously, is going to be your sample size. Okay. And this TOL plus or minus is your tolerance. So tolerance is going to be, you know, when you're specking something out. Let's say, you know, you're doing a men's large jacket, leather jacket, and your sample size is a large. 
and you want the chest circumference to be 49 inches. All right. What your tolerance is, if it comes in at 49 and a half, that's okay. If it comes in at 49 and three quarters, that's okay. If it comes in at 50, that is not okay. So like maybe your tolerance is plus or minus three quarters of an inch. So if your spec measurement is supposed to be 49, if it's 48 and a quarter, that is within tolerance. Okay? So that's what tolerance is, and you want to list that somewhere. So I put that at the end. These books also offer grade rules. This book is nice because it also has a bunch of extra flats to help you. Look at pockets and, ooh, stitch library. Oh, that's probably what's in the CD-ROM where you can just copy and paste it and put them in your flats. Mm. Oh, look, they have a metric conversion table. <laughs> nice. And then a fraction to decimal conversion chart. So here in the back, here are some incremental grade guides, okay? So neck circumference, difference in, in size in inches, fractions and decimals, all this sort of thing. So these are guides. They're not the Bible, all right? You're going to determine your grade, but for those of you who have no idea where to get started, this is a great place to start, okay? These are kind of, uh, you know, our industry does not have real, like, no regulations or anything. But these are good guides to get you started. And this book also has many grading examples. So they have a whole section on fitting and grading. This is another part that I really love about this book is they talk about the fit, when things ripple, how to change the pattern, you know, when you have a collar that's bunching up like this, you know, what to remove to get the fit right. So that's a perk of this book. And then they have a whole section on grading. And again, they have grade guides, you know, front length tolerance, charts upon charts and charts. Again, this book is thorough. And then they have a whole section on menswear garments because there are things that are special to menswear. And then there are your template sheets and a bunch of example flats, which is nice. And then they have a glossary. This book doesn't get into grading too much, but you know, it's so useful for so many other things. I mean, I'll look at this table of contents. You know, pause the video, look at this table of contents. It's quite an impressive amount of information. So when you have this set up, okay, this is how I like to do things, okay? So let's say that this is your center front, and let's say this is your medium, small, XS, large, XL. This is your size run. This is your sample size. Your sample size is a medium. So let's say your center front length is 20 inches. And let's say that as you get bigger or smaller, you're going to subtract half an inch, and increase half an inch. And maybe with the extra large, you're gonna increase an inch. And again, oh no, you know what? I'm gonna just go three quarters of an inch. I'm not gonna go a full inch. So yes, you can do different increments. You don't have to do exact increments all the way across. And you'll see that in a lot of these examples. So here it's like, you're going minus half an inch as you get smaller, but you're only increasing by an inch as you get bigger. Let's say I'm gonna put my tolerance at, you know, half an inch. It's only 20 inches, so if, you know, my tolerance is that, you know, you don't want, like you're gonna have mistakes happen in sewing, but you don't want people to pick up two mediums and then be like an inch different in length. That's crazy, especially when your length is only, your center front length is only 20 inches. So this is how the formula is going to read, okay? And it's not the exact measurement. You're gonna put them down as negative a half inch, negative minus one half inch, and not 19 and a half, not 19, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's much easier to have this be the variable and then set the formulas for these cells in Excel. Put in the your final 
complete, fitted beautifully sample spec measurements in this middle size column, okay? This is your medium, your sample size is a medium, you're putting the numbers in here. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? This is column F in Excel. And then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is row ten. So this block is F10. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to go learn Excel. Okay, Excel is something I use constantly in product development and organization, and it is a huge resource for you, so go learn Excel. So this block is F10. So if you're trying to get this number, you're gonna, this one is going to be equals, okay, you always start a formula with equals, F10, that's this cell, minus one. You know what, you should put 0 0.5. Okay. So no matter what you replace this number with, it's always going to be this minus half an inch because that's your grade rule. Depending on which version of Excel you have, you can set this up as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then when you set up all your formulas, it'll show up as, you know, it'll look like this. It won't have a plus sign. It'll just have. Usually, again, depending on which version of Excel you have, usually if you leave this blank, you're going to get error messages here because they don't have a reference point for this formula. So whatever you have in here, it's going to be equals F11. That's the row down. And let's say that grade rule is minus one, one inch. And then, of course, over here, is going to be equals F10 plus 0.5. So whatever number you put in here, the program is automatically add half an inch. So I would set formulas for everything, copy and paste formulas and input in the numbers, you know, use the templates over and over again. Like it's so much easier to do that than to change this number and then have to go in and do the math for all your other sizes again. I highly encourage you all to go learn Excel. Oh my God, that was so much information. I hope that was helpful to you. Again, go to zoehong.etsy.com to get these templates. You don't need to get them. You can make your own if you want, or you just buy mine. Or you could buy one of these books and format your own. Up to you, okay? These three are all good books. This one is, of course, again, uh, slightly different in usage than the other two, but... I hope this was useful for you. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today and drop me all your questions in the comments. Share with your fellow tech designers, design developers, entrepreneurs who are doing product development for the first time, all those good things. And uh, I will see you in the next video.